Hello everybody. In this video, I'm going to talk about all things PSAT and MSQT and specifically how you can get national merit scholarships and awards. I am a national merit semi-finalist with the class of 2026. I've applied to be a finalist and hopefully I'll be a scholar as well. So I'm going to give you an in-depth overview of how you can get a really high score and tips as you apply to become a finalist after receiving semi-finalist status or what to do as a commended student. So if you're looking to get one of the top scores, let's go ahead and get started. First off, for high achieving students, it's really important for you to take the PSAT and MSQT specifically in October of your junior year. So make sure you talk to your school early if you're homeschooled talk to a local public school and see or a private school and see if you can test there it's only for american students and i believe that you have to be a citizen as well you have to be a junior when you are taking the exam if you want to be considered for national merit so make sure you take it then with that said let's go ahead and get into tips some tips on how you can do well for the exam first off you should really consider what is your goal with taking this test? Is it simply to try to perform better on the SAT? Because students who take the PSAT generally do better on the real SAT. Because the PSAT is like a preliminary, a smaller copy of the SAT. But if you are looking to score exceptionally high and be awarded scholarships because of your score, then you're potentially going to want to prepare ahead of time. There are several different awards that you can be given, so I'm gonna go over a brief overview of each one so you can understand what you should be aiming for. First off, you could become a commanded student, which are students that are generally in the top two to four percent nationwide. So these students have really high test scores on the exam, but they're not top 1%. That's another status. Uh, commanded students will receive notification typically by their high school principal in September, and that's it in the process. They don't do anything further. Some colleges, like Liberty University, will award scholarships if you're a commanded student. Most won't. In fact, most don't award any kind of National Merit Scholarship, but you can still win an important scholarship or potentially a big scholarship and a award that's worth putting on your resume if you're a commanded student. And of course, one of the biggest benefits of studying and achieving a high score in the PSAT is going to be that you're going to get a high score in the SAT as well. The second status you can get based on your PSAT score is a National Merit Semi-Finalist. And this is when you score in the top 1% approximately in your state. And so some states are more competitive than others. The Northeast states tend to be the most competitive. The Midwestern states tend to be the least competitive. So it's important to check out what kind of scores you need in this states. And important thing to know is all of this isn't actually calculated based on your total score. It's based on an index, which is two times your reading writing score plus your math score divided by 10. So it's important you score really well on the reading and writing if you're trying to get any kind of national merit recognition. The selection index for my state, North Carolina, was 218. Last year, this year, it was 220. I had a 224 index with my PSAT score of 1500. So that made me a semi-finalist because I scored within the top 1%, which was that 220 and higher. There's probably another index, like 206 or something, that would determine whether you're a commended student. You had something in between 206 and your state's 1%, like 220 in North Carolina. That would put you as a commended student. But anyway, with that said, let's go ahead and talk about some of the other statuses you can receive. So once you're notified that you're a semi-finalist in September by your high school principal, you'll have about one month to complete the National Merit Finalist application. And this isn't a ton of work, especially for public schoolers. 
It only requires an essay, list of your extracurriculars and awards, and some personal background information as well. Your guidance counselor, who is for some homeschoolers, your parent, will also fill out a portion of the application. And so it's important for homeschoolers that you're on top of that because there's gonna be some additional information that's required, such as a little bit of school profiling, transcripts, that type of thing. Um, just as a hint, I put my personal essay that I'm gonna be using on the Common App this fall in as my National Merit essay. It took up about the same length as about the perfect length for that. And so you might just copy me as well. So anyway, it's important to note, it's really worth applying for that finalist status if you are a semi-finalist because 95% of semi-finalists become finalists, which is pretty amazing. Almost no scholarships all like that. If you become a finalist, then you'll be considered for national merit scholarships, which could be college-based, so awarded by the college you attend. Make sure you put down a college on your national merit application that does award scholarships or you might consider going to because it, they consider your first choice college when considering where your scholarships are going to be coming from if you're getting college-based scholarships. You can also get corporate scholarships which differ year to year and there's not as much information on them. Uh, and you can also get a National Merit Scholarship, which is a 2500 one-time scholarship that you'll hear back from sooner, but like before the other scholarships and before you have to make your college decisions. However, $2,500 isn't a lot, but it still comes with National Merit Scholar status. So it's a nice little bit of funds that you can add to help pay for college and a recognition that you've received to go on your resume. So that's a breakdown of all the statuses that you can get through National Merit. Let's talk about how you can work to get a really high score and you'll be able to get these. First off, like I already mentioned, consider what you're trying to aim for. Take a practice test. And my biggest tip here is just to start early. I started studying honestly more way further <laughs> beforehand than I would suggest, probably like a year and a half or so. My mom had me start studying for the SAT in late ninth grade, but I didn't really study, if I'm gonna be honest, um, until December before the SAT because I, or before the PSAT, because I realized that my math score was just not making it. It was a 640 at the time. And so I really worked to try to get my math score up. And I knew I could had it in me to be a National Merit semifinalist. And so I really worked for it. And again, like I said, I'd really suggest you start early. And if you want to become a commanded student, if you want to become a semifinalist or a finalist, I work to be like the next level up. If you want to be a commanded student, work for the score of a semifinalist because if you get a harder version of the test that day, your score could plummet. If you want to be a semifinalist, work for a perfect score for those more exceptional dates and for even the states that don't require as high of a score work for like a 1500. Um, plan to get a 1500. That way, if again, if you get a harder version of the test, it'll help you. And either way, even if you don't get a harder version and it works out just the way you'd want it, you still have a higher score, which when you're applying as a finalist and as a National Merit Scholar, they consider how high your score is. And so if it's higher, you're more likely to get these awards important to note. And so it's not necessarily always the best policy to try to be on the bottom edge of their cutoff range. I generally start preparing or suggest that you start preparing about six months before the exam. So October is the 10th month of the year, then that would be April, um, right as school's letting out. Preferably before summer, but if you really don't have time, you could wait until the end of May or early June by, yeah, again, I really wouldn't suggest waiting until then. Start off at least by taking a practice test over one of your weekends at the end of the school year and decide, is this actually something that's worth me trying to achieve? Because if your score is uh, 1100 starting out, it might be really hard for you to work hard enough in order to get that score and just giving yourself, allowing yourself some extra time. I'd really, only suggest for most states studying if you get a practice test score that's a 1300 or above. If, and if you plan to have completed Algebra 2 
by the time junior year is starting because material through algebra 2 is going to be tested so it's going to be really hard for you to get a super high score and improve if you're still taking algebra 2 geometry or trigonometry any of that type of math you really want to be in pre-calculus by this time and you can only study so much over six months so if you only have six months to go you can only expect to improve so many points if you have so much time you'd have to spend hours and hours and hours every single week to improve more than that and in my opinion it's just not a smart use of your time if you're trying to go to a good college spend time doing activities you love and hopefully that's not studying hopefully it's going to summer camps doing extracurricular activities over the summer and don't waste your whole summer after 10th grade just preparing for a school exam it's really not worth it but that said if you are scoring above 1300 then it's worth considering whether you could become a committed student or if you're willing to put in that effort to become a semi-finalist especially if you're one of the, in one of the lower scoring states if you decide that's worth it for you then you can begin studying and I'll give you some tips in a, just a second on how to create your study plan. If you're scoring in a 1400 or above, it might be worth considering trying to become a semi-finalist. Again, you can get some major scholarships, in fact, full rides by being a semi-finalist or at least becoming a finalist. And it's really a great award to be able to put on your college applications, especially if you're not applying to the most selective schools. So with that said, if you want to become a committed student, if you want to become a semi-finalist and just get a really high score to get these awards, these scholarships, and be guaranteed to score really well in the SAT, then I have some study tips for you. Use Khan Academy, especially for studying for the reading and writing portion of the exam. Go through all the different kinds of questions that they have. They give you some study tips, some tips on how to approach the problems. Also, another great resource is checking out videos on YouTube, such as the ones that I have for studying for the SAT because they carry over, or other videos as well and using and taking advantage of all the blue book practice tests. I wouldn't recommend taking an SAT practice test, save those for the SAT, because if you begin scoring really high, the PSAT practice tests won't be helping you anymore. Maybe try to take one once a month or so, just so you can get another baseline idea of how well your studying is working. Depending on how much you want to improve by, I suggest studying for about 10 hours for every 30 point improvement or so. Really utilize your weekends and any free time you have if you're looking to score really well in the math portion of the exam, I suggest using old paper SAT practice. There's the Khan Academy practice, in my opinion at least, is not as helpful. Uh, and again, using blue book practice tests and really drilling the problems that you've gotten wrong. Write down the numbers of those problems that you've really struggled with. Practice them over and over again until you can get them right. And that way you won't be stumped by those same problems on exam day and make sure you use Desmos graphing calculator as well. So those are some of my tips for taking the PSAT and MSQT. If you're looking to score really high to become a National Merit Commended student, semi-finalist, a finalist, and maybe even a National Merit Scholar, this is from one of the students who has done really well in this exam, and I want you to excel and succeed too. Whether you're taking the PSAT in 2025 or later on, I'm sure you've got this. Make sure you start early, you put in some dedicated time to studying, and if you really want this, then you'll be able to achieve it. So good luck, and you've got this.